So what I'm trying to talk about today is this concept called liquid democracy. Anyone already familiar with what this means? Just can you show a raise of hands? One, uh, two, three. Yes, so the majority has probably not heard about it. Uh, that's cool, because I'm here to completely explain what it is and why is it called liquid and all these kind of things. Um, first of all, I have to state that, um, uh, just to not be confused by uh, uh, no confusion, I'm not a Democrat. Because sometimes I start my uh, speech and then people start thinking I'm a leftist uh, kind of person by promoting democracy. That's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm neutral in politics. Um, I have no party relation at all. And it's exactly the opposite. What I'm trying to talk about is how we can change uh, this kind of political system and why it would be good if we would change it. But let me do a one minute a quick history on, on uh, democracy, just to see where we're coming from. We got this uh, concept from ancient Greece, and the word comes from, from demos means the common people, uh, kratos means the rule, the strength, and it was the system um, form, formulated in the, around the 600 BC. Um, after um, periods of very brutal, tyrannic systems, uh, which were really not functioning, uh, one of the rulers uh, called uh, Cleisthenes came up with the idea that why don't we let the people of the polis, the city, uh, decide on what uh, roads to take, what decisions to make. It was a novel idea at that point because the past was totally tyrannical systems. Um, so then they, later on uh, Pericles reformed this system a little bit, but the main idea was that uh, the population of the polis uh, went out to a hill close to the city, the police, uh, and um, they raised the issues, and uh, with the raising by the hand, they voted on the issues, and that's how they formulated the decisions. Um, around 6,000 people participated in such a uh, decision-making process, and um, that's what we basically call direct democracy, because uh, people went out there, and they expressed their opinion directly. Now, it, it is a really good system because you, you can get your voice heard. What the problem is with it, that if you try to do it today in New York City, uh, let's try to assemble the population of New York City and take them out to um, a, close, uh, <laughs> a place close to the city and, and make them make decisions, it would not really work for, for um, several reasons. Uh, the two main reasons is uh, that, uh <laughs> that there are uh, so many people uh, it's not possible to, to physically do this. And uh, the, there are so many issues that people would not have actually time to do this all the time whenever an issue comes up for, for this huge uh, population. So this democracy that they, the ancient Greeks uh, came up with does not scale. So what did we do? We, we decided to go another, uh, we decided to make an improvement uh, on it and do something called the representative democracy where we, we don't go we don't make decisions on everything directly. Let's just make a decision every four years or so, or so and uh, select someone who will represent me for the next four years and make the decisions for me that's uh, uh, supposed to be the decision that I would make. So I'm sending in someone who will represent my interest. Um, they are the elected representatives. Um, Occasionally, we, we revert back to referendums. That's when, when the whole nation is being asked uh, on, on, a on a decision. But that's very occasional because we, know it, we all know that it costs a lot, it's a huge amount of money uh, uh, to make such referendums. So it's like a Brexit. It's a very unique uh, situation when you do that. Uh, the, the, what's the benefit of this system? It, this scales to any size. Because maybe we send like 200 or 300 people into this room. Um, any amount of people, 10 million, 100 million, any amount of people can elect 200 people and those people can make the decision. But obviously we have a big drawback because at this point we lost our direct input. No one asks me in the four-year period what is my opinion. They are the delegates who decide in my name from that point. But the re the, we choose those people, right? So at the start of the four-year, we chose them to be there. 
So they will represent us perfectly well. Is that correct? So everything is fine with this system, right? Uh, <laughs> let, me, let me do a quick survey. Who is happy with the current political system? That we have? Who would say that he is happy and satisfied with, with how uh, politics works uh, nowadays? A raise of hand. I don't see any hands up there. <laughs> who, who would say that it's it's so so? It works works all right. <laughs> all right, it's about like fifteen percent. Who would go as far as saying that he hates politics and he switches the TV channel whenever a political um, thing come up? It's one, two, three. Like uh, yeah, it's like one third. Um, we were running a, a uh, workshop in Hungary where we invited people who said they hate politics and uh, we run a workshop and let them explain why they hate politics and why they don't participate in politics. And um, basically, uh, I will show you the results, what they came up with. This was the top five reasons that they, they um, pointed out for hating politics. They mentioned that there is a lot of corruption and uh, lobby. Uh, by lobby, they said it, they defined it as uh, legalized corruption. Uh, that is uh, perfectly okay in the system, is built around it. They said uh, there is no accountability. They said that they see that if they do something bad, there is no consequence of, of uh, that for the politician. They said that the politician has no understanding of the issues. They felt that uh, the people who decide in their name are not uh, in the picture, uh, so to speak. They, they don't know. Um, they also said that they have no personal relationship with their delegates. So they, they voted in someone, they don't have a direct personal relationship with this person, and they felt this is a problem. Uh, and also they said that they have limited real options to choose from, meaning they often have to pick from uh, which they hate, which person they hate less. So they might have three candidates, and they don't like neither, uh, either of them, but they have to pick one which is the least bad. So uh, that's not a good situation, obviously. Uh, so this was their opinion, and uh, there was actually a one person who, who said uh, democracy is totally not working. It's, it's, it's a bad concept uh, to begin with. Let's forget about it. Uh, is there anyone in the, in the group who feels that democracy is totally messed up? And Because and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's one uh, common opinion. Yes, we have something like 15%. Uh, uh, yes, I would like to give an alternative question that uh, is a representative democracy a problem? And um, <laughs> yes, there are quite a few people uh, in, with that opinion as well. Um, for the remainder who did not choose between the two, let me give you a thought experiment um, so that you can make your choice uh, which one is, is your camp. It's totally all right if you choose either of those. I'm not trying to uh, balance you. Uh, Imagine an ideal democracy. I, I will use this, uh, the oracle example. Imagine there is an oracle that can uh, scan our minds, uh, our, uh, everyone's mind in this room, and uh, find out uh, what we want to have for dinner. And we'll make a selection what is the best for the majority and throw out this output. It costs nothing and gives you the correct answer and it will make the most people happy and we go with that choice for, for dinner. Do you think it's a good way to, to make choice for what dinner will be, or it's not a good way? Because uh, uh, obviously some of you will say it's not a good way, some of you will say it's a, it's a good way, but if you say it's a bad way, then you are against democracy, basically. You don't want the, major, uh, the will of the majority. If you say it's a good way, then you are pro-democracy, but you don't like how we are being represented in Parliament. And um, I'm not here to make you a fan of democracy, uh, because I'm not, I don't believe democracy is always the right uh, way to go um, on certain things. But I'm here to tell you, if there is a decision that you want to make democratically, there is a better way, a much better way than doing it through this representative system that we use today, which is hundreds of years of old, and we can do much better than that right now. Um, I will, uh, let's say you said this ideal democracy works for you, and you, you would like this system. Let me show you very quickly how much we deviate from this ideal, 
when we do this representative system. Uh, there are several ways that I try to collect and formalize. For example, this is one I call the entry problem. Imagine there is a group, political party, that wants to say yes to a certain thing, a certain issue. They are the yellow. And there are many, many groups who say no, but they are smaller groups, and most political uh, 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 representative systems have a limit. In, in my country, it's 5%. If you don't have 5% for your party, you never make it to the parliament building, so you won't let get your voice heard at all. So maybe 95% of the people want to say no, but they are fragmented up into these smaller groups, and 5% or 10% wants to say yes, but they are together. Uh, and they can make it into the parliament building, they get representation, and they will get yes through the yes uh, decision. So this is not good. So what do, what do people do? Well, many say that they just need to form coalitions, right? So, so these smaller guys, let's, let them put together into one party, and then they will be much bigger than the yellow guys. OK, they can do that. And that's exactly what leads to the second problem, the lack of choice. And in every country, you usually have two or three major uh, choices that you can select from. Uh, and this is a result of this forced, uh, forced coalition forming. Uh, it is forced on them, otherwise they can't get their representation. So you end up with two or three choices. But how can, uh, uh, is, it, is it real uh, choice when you can uh, choose from three things? I don't think so. It's, it's a choice when you can choose from hundreds of things and different, if you have diversity. Otherwise, it's, it's, it's not really, it's a left and right paradigm that we have in most countries is really limiting our, our uh, thinking and, uh, and our choices. Uh, this is sort of overlaps with this, this uh, thing that I call the single choice problem. And imagine for the next four years, there will be millions of small issues to decide on. And now at the beginning of the four year period, I have to pick a candidate that I'm giving my vote to for the next four years for this one million issue. And I have three choices of candidates for that. Now imagine how many different combinations are for a million choices. Even if there is a, they are binary choices, it's a two on the millionth. Now I have to pick three person, I have to choose from three person, who is the one who will um, <laughs> map, who, ma map my choices on, on him? Well, you might find someone who, who you match in 100,000 cases, but you will never find someone who perfectly matches your, your, uh, your choices. Um, actually, the difference is, is very large. Uh, uh, also, I will mention loss of control that the people are also mentioned uh, in the workshop, that you don't have any uh, control uh, during the four years that you, you give the mandate to these people. And um, so it turns into an election race because of this nature. Uh, they have to promise as much as possible in the election period, and then they tend to forget a lot of it uh, in the first year because, because there is no direct control, there is no um, way to, to uh, force them on, the, on their uh, promises that they made. Um, the fact that you have pe loss of personal contact is also uh, mentioned, and it's a very big problem. Um, Basically, we are giving trust to these people, all our trust that they will represent us there. And we, most of the time, we don't even know these people. I mean, we expect it to give all of our trust on major issues that we'll, they will decide for our sake. And we only seen this guy on a poster. So it's, it's, it's like uh, <laughs> trusting uh, marketing or advertisement uh, about uh, the most uh, major important decisions in our lives. I, I, it's not really a good idea. So let me present you with an alternative. What if we have a much better uh, way to do these things? Because we are in the 21st century and we have technology to help us. Uh, I, I will give you five rules that are rules of liquid democracy. It's very simple, basically. Rule number one, you can pick anyone to be your representative. It doesn't have to be a politician. He doesn't have to wear tie and uh, you know suit. It can be anyone. 
He's your delegate. You can delegate your uh, vote to him. Second, delegation is transitive. The one person you delegate it to can delegate forward to another person. You can have multiple delegates for different types of issues. So you don't have to delegate everything, every issue, to one person, because you might know someone who is better on, on um, uh, financial issues, and you know someone who is better on, on um, energy issues, for example. Uh, you can split your delegation along uh, topics and uh, categories. Fourth, your delegation can be changed anytime. You don't have to wait four years. Anytime you, are not, you don't like what's happening, you change your delegation. Or you can revoke your delegation anytime. That means you still have your direct vote whenever you want. So you set up a delegation, but you can pull it back anytime and make a direct choice. These are the five simple rules of liquid democracy. And uh, basically, just the, the intuition behind it is that you're not giving away uh, uh, your control. You have your full control all the time, but we realize that you don't want to deal with every minor issue uh, along the way because you just simply don't have time. So what you do is you can delegate some of the things and you keep your vote on those things that you think are important enough and then you research enough. Uh, so let me give you an, a quick example about that. Um, yeah. They are Hungarian politicians. I'm sorry for this. is a, the Hungarian version of my um, talk. Uh, I just... Anyways, imagine that the first person on the top is uh, like Donald Trump. Okay, and uh, because we have similar uh, views there. And, 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 the, and the second one is like Hillary Clinton. All right? So uh, <laughs> uh, let's say, let's imagine this guy, Peter. Who, who actually supports Mr. Trump about uh, immigration policy, and he wants a big fence on the border. But he supports uh, Hillary Clinton about uh, unemployment benefit things. Now imagine today's world, he cannot do anything. He is forced to pick between these two choices, right? And he's, he's, he has this internal uh, struggle. In, I want the fence, but I want higher social benefits. Uh, what does, he cannot uh, express his opinion. In this system, he can express uh, his opinion perfectly. Now he delegates two ways. Uh, in economic issues, he will delegate, uh, uh, sorry, in energy issues in particular, he will delegate to a scientist that he knows. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, in economical issues, he will delegate to his neighbor first because he doesn't want to deal with economy and he knows this guy next door who is very smart in economy. And this guy delegates further, because he's not an expert in everything. In energy issues, he, he delegates to a scientist. And in transportation issues, he delegates to a green activist, because uh, the guy wants more bicycle roads. So this is just a, a very simple example um, of uh, how flexible it is and how many choices you can um, uh, show. Um, you, it can, you can perfectly map your, your uh, desires and you don't have to make compromises at all. Uh, since I'm running out of time, uh, there was an example that uh, uh, our president uh, might want to leave the EU, and uh, so Peter is revoking his delegation in this case and makes a direct vote um, because he can. Okay, this free is, it features a free entry, equal playing field. Anyone can become a politician. You have full control. Uh, it's a homework to, to check that you have none of the problems that I described. Uh, and you never lose your vote. It um, always remains, you, it's always expressed. Uh, you don't, you're not forced into any tactical voting. It's a perfect system. Uh, it's called liquid because uh, your vote flows like liquid, like water. And it has liquidity, like in the market sense. You can change it any time. Uh, it's compatible with direct democracy, and it's also compatible with representative democracy. So you can, if you're a fan of this or a fan of that, you can set up your uh, delegations according to that. You can vote on everything, or you can delegate everything. Uh, so it's, it's, um, if we went for this system, it could be easy to, to 
convince the public that it is better because it's compatible with both. They're not losing anything. If someone wants uh, Mr. Trump to decide for him for the next four years, he just sets up a delegation on all topics for Mr. Trump and leaves it there for, for four years, and it's like, like that. Yes? This, this is very interesting. One, one part of representative democracy um, that could be a good thing, I don't see represented here, but maybe, maybe, maybe it fits, if you could tell us. What about the deliberation and the compromise? Because when a representative democracy is working well, people meet in a, in a parliament or a, or a congress, there can be discussions, people can persuade, and there can be a compromise. So in your previous slide, you had the scientist who wants to build a nuclear power plant, the other guy who wants bike paths. Let's suppose they want to do both, but there's not enough money, so they have to raise taxes. And you have, you have to figure out, OK, do we do one or the other, or do we do both and raise taxes? And you have to have some kind of deliberation to decide that. How does that kind of a decision fit into this? Yes, uh, it's, it, uh, what I'm giving you is a, is a very simplified uh, uh, concept of what liquid democracy is. It's actually very complex because uh, you should, um, uh, if I had more time, I would talk about implementation, but I, I will skip it. Uh, lots of things have to be uh, uh, decided on. One is, for example, how issues are being raised and uh, how it's not just decision making, but decision preparement phase. And many of the other uh, workshops uh, uh, this week are talking about those parts, uh, fortunately. Um, it's, it's not easy, as all these things have to be solved, but they are solvable. Um, um, every uh, proposition that you have in the system has to include the budget as well. Where is the money coming from? So, so we are not voting on increasing social benefits. That's a stupid thing. We are voting on increasing social benefits from this raised tax. That's a full uh, um, proposal that can be voted on. We cannot vote on anything that is not um, containing the, the source of the money that is... Um, so so uh, these things are built into the rules, the ground rules of how it works. Yes, and we also have to work this out because liquid democracy currently does not exist. It's, it's a concept. Um, small co uh, communities like the uh, Pirate Party uh, is using it. And uh, I'm giving you some links to, to check further if you want to know more. And I will show you um, also my project that I'm working on. Uh, my idea how to get liquid democracy to the world is to introduce it through smaller communities. Because smaller communities, you show them a tool that they can use. It's easier to understand. Liquid democracy is pretty easy. Uh, I can talk about it for, for a day. It's still easier if I give you an app that, uh, that does it. And... Uh, my app is, a spe is specifically for condominium buildings. So condominium buildings have a meeting every year, and they have to decide on uh, how do they spend their money. Uh, will they renovate the building? How do they spend? Uh, um, um, what color should be the building wall and etc? And uh, we are giving them a platform where they have a forum where they can discuss. They can raise issues in the forum. If, if on the forum it becomes popular, then it becomes a voting. And then they can vote uh, supportive votes. Here you see a uh, ranked vote. It's, it's, it's actually, it's also, it would be worth to talk about just that for a while, because uh, ranked voting is much better to express the, the will of the community than binary voting. So they, they each rank uh, the color that they want the building to be in, and we do, you do Condorcet uh, method to, to, uh, to evaluate which color will be the, the most uh, liked. And um, so in this, uh, we have decision making, voting agendas, you can set up your delegations, you can set uh, um, certain people delegate to on certain topics or certain agendas or, or the just general blanket uh, delegation. And uh, it shows your, uh, how much power you have in the house right now. Uh, it's basically, it's a bit of a gamification. You can become a politician just by being popular. If, if people like how you think about things and they trust you, you become a politician just by that. You don't have to wear a suit. You don't have to go to the right schools. It's like in the internet, you, you are smart, you follow an event, 
uh, you can be a blogger and you can provide news for the people and people will be interested. You don't have to work for CNN anymore to provide news. Uh, the same thing. You can be a politician just by being liked and uh, favored by the others. So this app is about to be released. Uh, it's ready for condominium buildings and for any other groups. It's open source. Uh, it's free to download and uh, use. It's actually a client-side app that um, uh, I also plan to uh, put the data on the blockchain because then it's uh, uh, not a, I don't want, I don't see this as a server-based application in the future because uh, it contains actually even financial data about the community. The community has finances, uh, budget, and it contains all the data about that. Um, on a server, it's hackable. Uh, I better store it on the centralized data structure. <clears throat> 